The Shearson CX-10 Nano quadcopter hit the market in the summer of 2014, a little over a year ago. At the time of release, it was the world's smallest quadcopter. This combined with the fact that it was pretty reasonable in all other regards, like flight characteristics, price and durability, made it widely popular and soon one of the staples of the toy multi-rotor market. Six months later, Shearson tried to repeat their success with the CX-10A. The same product in all respects, but with added headless mode, a function which tries to keep track of the orientation of the aircraft so the person controlling it doesn't have to. Despite with this addition being easier to fly than ever, the CX-10A wasn't met with the same overwhelming demand, possibly because the update felt too insignificant to warrant another purchase for most people. Another half year have passed, and now Shearson releases a third variation, the CX-10C. Again, the same product in all respects but one, but this time, in a nano quadcopter first, it's a built-in camera. This more significant update should warrant a look even from initiated enthusiasts already owning the original CX-10 or CX-10A. Whether you're one of these people or new to the hobby though, there are likely two main questions of interest to you. How does it compare to the original CX-10 and what's the camera like? In this video, I'll try to answer these questions. Welcome to the review and flight test of the CX-10C nano quadcopter from Shearson. Before talking differences, let's begin by appreciating how little has changed externally despite this substantial update internally. Length and width of the aircraft as well as distance between the rotors are the same as on the original. The propellers are also identical, meaning whatever spares you already got from any of the older models should work on this one as well. At least theoretically, the fact that all significant measures are unchanged should mean that accessories like prop guards will also work on the 10C without modification. The differences come in both subtle and obvious forms. In terms of the latter, there's the more elaborate paint job. The quadcopter currently comes in two colors, orange and black. The new apparent logo, which is quite literally a flying eye, and of course, the camera. More subtle changes include the increased height compared to the older models, supposedly to house the camera module, the fact that the on-off switch and charging port has been moved from the back of the quadcopter to its side, and the inclusion of a microSD card slot on the opposite side. Just as on the older CX-10 models, there are four moderately bright, clearly visible LEDs, one on each motor mount in two different colors, blue and red, in order to tell direction when flying in a dark room or outside at night. But the CX-10C also has another, not quite as bright light to indicate the status of the camera. This will go on when ready, flash when capturing photos or video, and stay off when no microSD card is inserted. The CX-10C comes with a typical nano transmitter, in fact identical to the ones of the older CX-10 models, which, although being a little small for my hands and taste, works adequately. Mine uses mode 2, which means throttle and yaw are controlled with the left stick and pitch and roll are controlled with the right stick, but from what I gather, there's also a mode 1 version out there. You click the left stick in order to cycle between rates and the right in order to perform flips. The camera is operated via the roll and trim buttons. The transmitter not only looks the same, but also uses the same protocol as the older CX-10 models. I was able to successfully bind and fly the CX-10C with my CX-10 transmitter and vice versa. I really want to commend Shearson for this spare part compatibility. If something breaks, whether it's the propellers, the transmitter or the USB charging cable, you either already have a drop-in replacement gathering dust at home or, at least, you won't have to wait months for spare parts to become available. Except for the already mentioned quadcopter, transmitter and USB charging cable, the CX-10C comes generously equipped with a full set of spare propellers, a screwdriver, which serves no clear purpose, a microSD card USB adapter, a 2GB microSD card and an overall clear and concise instruction manual. I had forgotten how well the original CX-10 flies, but got a pleasant reminder as I dusted mine off in preparation for this review. Very stable, quite snappy and actually relatively powerful, which I know sounds like an oxymoron talking about nano quadcopters. The CX-10C definitely maintains the stability of its predecessor and while not feeling as powerful was something I expected considering the added components, I was sad to notice both pitch and yaw had been dialed down especially the fixed yaw rate, which was not especially fast on the original, and now among the slower of the quadcopters I've flown. It's not too big a deal, it is a camera quad after all, but it definitely makes it better suited for indoor than outdoor flying. Something that does feel like more of a big deal is flight time. 
This is advertised as 2.5 to 4 minutes, and I pretty consistently get 2.5 minutes when recording and 3 minutes when not. This includes the around 20 second long LVC warning. This is short, even for a nano quadcopter and something that is likely to put people off. There's always the possibility something's up with my USB charging cable, which tend to be unreliable regardless of manufacturer, causing it to not top up the battery completely between flights. Also, the battery is listed as either 80 or 120 milliamp hours, depending on if you choose to believe the box or the information online. If it's the former, this could also explain the short flight time. A very positive surprise was the quality of the camera and the footage it captures. It obviously won't impress compared to a more proper external camera, but then again, that can be attached to and flown with a nano quadcopter. The video quality is just as good as I hoped it would be, with no distracting vibrations, weird artifact or file corruptions. Pretty darn good for a built-in toy multi-rotor camera, let alone a nano, and perfect for capturing whatever hijinks you can come up with with this thing. In conclusion, it's quite impressive what Shearson has achieved with the CX-10C. What many people, including myself, would have doubted to even be possible is now not only a reality, but an affordable, easy to fly, overall well-functioning reality. The CX-10C does leave some room for improvement though. Most notably, the slow fixed yaw rate and the short flight time. Still, if you're anything like me, don't let that detract you from one of the coolest leaps in nano quadcopters to happen since, well, nano quadcopters. Thanks for watching, and if you're new, welcome to the channel. I'm just here to remind you that subscribing is a thing that exists and something you can do in order to be notified of whatever future videos I post. Commenting and liking are also things that exist, just saying. Alright, see you soon in another review, bye bye.